To further weigh in, let's bring in TPUSA contributor and former Olympian Anthony Watson, along with author, speaker, worship leader, and founder of Let Us Worship, Sean Foy. Good afternoon to both of you, and thanks for being with us. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, honored. Thanks for having us. Sean, let me start with you. Uh, you know, so much outrage as to this this uh, opening ceremony at the Olympics. Shocking to see when, you know, the, the world is supposed to come together and unite uh, over the love of sport, over these athletes, their dedication, uh, our countries on the world stage. And, and we saw this depiction of the Last Supper, and obviously so many are outraged. Why, why is this happening right now? Why, you know, we, we see that, you know, a lot of times in, in the U.S. sports, things have gotten woke, but why in France did we see this kind of a display well there's two two parts of this first i want to say what's amazing is that god loves he loves us so much that he sent his son on the cross to die for the whole world that everyone believes in him can be saved even those that mock him even pagans that hate him and mock him he still died for their sins but the second part of this is that it's very revealing right these these this pair of ceremony is very revealing the global leftists are really bigots. They hate Christianity. They don't want peace. They don't want unity, clearly. I think uh, if it was another religion, there would be a lot more outrage. It seems that Christians are, are really targeted these days. What's your reaction to seeing this, particularly as somebody who is a, has been an Olympic athlete? Well, as an Olympian myself, it's appalling. But as a believer, you know, my heart's broken because you see people doing things in a way that is not normal. And I think what a lot of people are failing to realize is that this isn't the only time that this kind of depiction has been done. You've had artists in Hollywood, you have musicians, you know, on the biggest stages and labels um, in the West that have done certain things like this. And the only reason people take shots at Christianity is because they know, as a Christian myself, what our response is supposed to be. They continually push the envelope knowing that our response is supposed to be loving, gentle, kind, and accepting, and turn the other cheek because they won't do it to Muslims because they know that Muslims will respond with violence. The same thing by doing it with Hindus, Mormons, any other religion that's man-made that has no sustenance and foundation to actually give anyone any hope in any of the situations that we have right now which is why Christianity is always under constant attack. And so to use the opening ceremony of the biggest stage of sports is what the left and what people who don't care about any kind of moral compass do. They use, and uh, from Super Bowl halftime shows to concerts all over the place, whenever there's a mass following of people, they start feeding little nuggets of propaganda until you have all of these things out there because people don't know that Paris was one of the countries that was in favor of having transgender men compete with women. And so now, because the World Athletic Association shut that down, now they're doing this whole display of how, how God is a woman and all these other things to do that. And it's heartbreaking to see, because as an Olympian, I was always happy as a teenager and as a young adult growing up that when the Olympics were on for two weeks, there was no talks of war. There was no talks of terrorism. There was no talks of any kind of discrepancies or yeah. disagreements because everyone was chained for the country. And right now, with a country that's raising people to be ashamed of where they come from, ashamed of their heritage, ashamed of our Judeo-Christian foundations and whatnot, it's no surprise that this is happening. But it's a call to action, especially for Christians all over the world, to continue to remind ourselves that this is just temporary, and Jesus told us already that these are the things that are going to happen, but our response is to pray and to continue to go into those places where a lot of people feel like we don't belong to bring the light, because to fall away and to move out of that situation isn't solving anything. It just gives more ground for the enemy to do what he's doing, what you see here. Sean, I know a lot of people are, are saying they're going to boycott the Olympics. They're not watching. Would you say um, yeah. that they should tune out this year? How should people react beyond obviously being vocal uh, about their faith? You know, that's such a that's such a tough question because I, mean, I love the Olympics. Just like Anthony was saying, I grew up, my whole family, we gathered together and celebrated and cheered everybody on. And there's so many incredible Christian athletes that have been preparing their whole life for this moment and they share Bible verses and they give glory to God. So I celebrate them and I wanna support those Olympic athletes in this Babylonian system. But I'll tell you, for me and my family, I'm not gonna subject my family to that kind of filth. And I have a role as a father and a protector over my home to push out perversion and, and sexualization for my children. I'm just not gonna allow that to happen. So if we do watch some of it, it will be go through the filter of me first. and. 
You know, I think that that's very sad that we have to do that, just like Anthony was saying and so many other prior Olympians. Um, these, these guys have worked hard to shine a light, and we want to celebrate them. But at the same time, you know, we cannot participate in the open mockery of Jesus Christ. Like, I will not be on that side. I will not participate. And if boycott is what that comes to, then that's what that comes to. Anthony, you know, I love watching athletes at the podium, and, and oftentimes so many of them look up to the sky. You see them praising God. Um, what would be your message to our athletes right now as, as they've witnessed this opening ceremony? They've poured uh, years and hours in, into their training, and here they are on the world stage. Uh, what would be your message to them? Well, first and foremost, I would agree with Sean in saying that there has to be a filtering system because a lot of people will turn a blind eye to evil in the name of sport. But what I can honestly say from being in that atmosphere myself as an athlete is that you have to know and understand and realize that your life as an athlete is temporary. Your reputation and destination as a believer is permanent. Eternity is coming for everybody, and you have to choose which side of the pendulum you want to be on. And so as an athlete myself, I no longer compete anymore because there's only a prime amount of years that you have to actually get the maximum amount of performance out of your body as an, as an athlete. And for the athletes that are there, I tell them, look, an Olympian is what you get to do. Sports are what you get to participate in. It's not who you are, because at the end of the day, something that's only a permanent part, uh, a, a temporary part of your permanent story isn't something that's worth investing your entire identity in, because then when it's gone, then what do you have? Mm, indeed. And, you know, I really hope that more athletes will come forward and, and celebrate their faith and the way that Riley Gaines has elevated women's sports. I, I hope more will come forward and, and say, I'm a Christian and I'm proud of it and I'm not willing to hide or tolerate uh, the kind of nonsense like we saw on Friday. We have to leave it there. But Anthony Watson, Sean Foyt, thank you both for being with us. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. And we have much more ahead on National Desk. Stay with us. We'll be right back.